went ahead and did what I kept. I think I might even mention this several times that I've maybe looked at this. Like, I need to add details about how he was injured before he died. So if there are injuries on his skull or just things that would show up in a photo of him before he's killed in Carthage, be good to know. And uh, luckily, I mean, they did take photos of the skulls so you can see where there was remodeling and certain damage, like the step deformity. The Dr. Herod talked about, so of course they were looking for that in the scandal degree type, and that's in Lillian Shono, Brother Joseph again. And they tried to grab for that, but of course that was just, anyway, I might not say anything else. You already know what I think about the Walker fight, so. Oh, I don't mean to laugh, I'm sorry. Um, so I changed it to artistic facial analysis, so I apologize if it, I think the links stayed the same. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I change, I just, I don't know, the names of the pages or no, I don't know. But I do have the links to everything. So you can, you go like that. Okay, you see a Mickey Mouse hand? Go like that. Now you can read, read about the mobbing. 25th, 26th of December, you can open this up on the Joseph Smith Papers website. And you can just read the handwriting. I think this is Willard Richards' handwriting, but they put this as 1832. Okay, and then I did grab some things that that were important from that. And so and you can find, this is Joseph's words, said, I found myself going out the door in the hands of a dozen men. And it says a second before that, he actually woke up. The thing that woke him up was Emma screaming murder. And I think that's just an expression, meaning she's just screaming really loud, right? Because they had two twins. Oh, I, c I can actually go here and open this up. So you can read it there if you want, or you can read the typed version. And they explained that the twins had measles. They're two adopted, a boy and a girl. There was a Joseph. There was um, Julie Murdoch. So the Murdochs, the mother died. So they gave these adopted twins to Joseph and Emma. After this point, Emma had lost three children in birth. So she's really having a hard time trying to have children and not lose them. So she'd, she'd lost a boy, and then lost two twins in 1831. So like around April, I think. So they're almost a year old. And the little boy was older than Julia. Julia was actually sicker, and the boy was healthier. But the older boy actually ended up dying because some people say later, it's not so much, I mean, it is in here, but um, because of the cold, but people get specific that Joseph was holding the little boy when i'll read it here they grabbed him and so basically you heard that the boy sort of rolled on the ground and it was winter there's still snow outside and so the snow was just coming in and um, emma was just screaming holding the little girl and it was just really traumatic so he got cold exposure it was just had measles and was not even a year old so he passed away later very soon after actually but um, Joseph Smith's details of this, so that he found he was going out and they, they'd grabbed him by his hair, um, his clothing, his shirt, but apparently he, because he was fighting so much, but they had his hair. So I wonder if he had longer hair like Brigham Young back then, who knows? Because we don't have artwork from 1832 of Joseph Smith. But to have such a big clump, I'm imagining maybe he, maybe it was a style to have a little bit longer hair. I don't know. But that's important to note. And they almost choked him to death. And they tried to put a glass vial, the vial broke in his mouth. Um, they did tar and feather him and someone scratched him, beat him, being really bad. And then the next morning he describes that he went after a whole night, they're ripping tar. And so basically scratched him up and then put tar on him. 
really bad. You can imagine how painful that would be. And then he was ready for clothes in the morning. I mean, his flesh was all scarified and defaced. So he says he is defaced. And he preached to the congregation in the morning. And so we've got, again, that first link is, it's 1832, that that happens. And then adding on, a lot of people sort of highlight, so you could go to, you're not going to be able to open this up here. There used to be a link on my website. It's probably still my videos. I, it's hard to go back. I'll, I'll find that a link works, and, and that one worked forever. But some people just don't want to keep their website up, or maybe they got in trouble. Because I just couldn't find anything. I, I thought about buying uh, Levi Hancock's actual journal. But then other people do actually quote it. So you can go here. And you can just control F and go to Levi Hancock. So you can read it there. But I also just have the quote here. So Levi Hancock describes. Next, he's, this is his journal. This is the prophet sent for me. I went and saw him and had a conversation with him. Heard him tell about being mobbed in Hiram and how they pulled the hair out of his head and then showed me the place where they pulled the hair out. So this was told to me by the archivist or the archivist quoting someone from the Joseph Smith Papers team. Don't know who that is, but just even watching their videos, like that's a lot of people that work with the Joseph Smith Papers team. And usually the people that volunteer to talk have been people that just want to, that just don't believe there's a photo of Joseph Smith. They're the ones that are interviewed. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, they were trying to argue that my picture showed a man that did not have his hair brushed forward, also which is not true, and then tried to say that his collar was low on the neck. It couldn't be any higher. It's covering his jawbone. You know, that's just when I just stopped talking. I'm like, okay, I was all excited. I'm like, it, this, he's wearing the vest. The vest is in the Pioneer Memorial Museum, and he matches the death mask. And there were members there. I did. I didn't know about the sons. So. You people that worked there, look at my emails and see if I knew anything. I didn't. I knew nothing about the sons in Kendall County living there, living close to Jet. I knew nothing about that in 2017. It wasn't until 2018 that I was just um, had a job where I sometimes could just wait for um, customers and uh, could just read and research. It was pretty great. I had quite a few jobs where I would just sort of have a lot of downtime and I just researched and researched for hours. It was just awesome. His hair's brushed forward. It's going over his ears. And so they were saying, well, that he did that because Levi Hancock explained the hair was pulled out. Um, the collar is covering his jawbone. So, okay. And the next one, important injuries he endured was 1835. His brother, William, we do know, almost beat him to death. And so you can read, this is Joseph Smith's letter to him. Um, and then we've also got secondhand accounts that give more of a detail to that. But I go ahead and uh, quote him explaining Just how he had a lame side and his brother just heaped, you know, and his, he, he does use the word that his skin is mangled. So clearly don't know quite too much what happened to his face, but that the second hand counts are more detailed. They said that he was beaten so badly he could not sit down or stand up. So, I mean, you're assuming he did punch him in the face too at that time. And so it's hard to tell. When did he get that step deformity? Either of those times, maybe. So, if I just bought the book Million Shall Know Brother just again, then I would have known about In Search of Joseph, and then I would have known six doctors believe the skull that I thought was Joseph also was Joseph. So, and they had three different studies all had good 
solid explanations of people that are actually doctors that actually know about the human body and anatomists, you know? And so I've got all that on here, but that's not new. But yeah, you, you can read through all of this. But yeah, here's the letter. I didn't quite show this, but you can, this is Joseph Smith's letter to his brother. So I'm just kind of scanning that here to, but to mangle the flesh or sleek revenge. Uh, but then it might also be quoting Paul, but that kind of made me wonder if his skin or if his face or if bones were really very badly damaged. So you can go through that and then you can read these second hand accounts where again, he couldn't sit down, couldn't stand up without help. So that's how badly William beat him. So they, I found other places people really thought he was going to kill him. So that's two situations where he is beaten so badly that he believes other people think that he's about to be killed. But this article is it's mostly focused on how you know Joseph Smith did forgive him. Okay, and then you can watch this is my most recent. I tried to use a brighter color, so I did hot pink. You can click on that and just see my whole analysis. I did another analysis recently. <laughs> it's just interesting to me. It's it's fun to analyze it because it matches so well. But when I look at especially, I think the locket photo is the worst one. I just don't understand how that has gotten so much clout. But um, like when I did this with that, like I had, I couldn't straight grab like if you go back here, this is, you know, on his face. And then here's the death mask. And then I, I do kind of adjust a few things, but not just the outline was the only thing. When I put on the death mask, I made this, I resized that, but I'm not needing to tilt these any direction at all. This isn't need, doesn't need to be tilted. This does not need to be tilted. Um, I brought the eyebrows in or out. I think the eyebrows are a little bit closer together in the death mask, but again, rigor mortis, skin tightening, because it'd been 24 hours since he died, so it would make sense the eyebrows might come together closer. So you, you can watch this video because they're a little bit farther. So I, I kind of dropped that right there to show this angle, that angle, and then this thinner eyebrow, the nose, like everything just matches super, super well. But as you go down here, you can see uh, my artistic rendition of the skulls compared to the death mask that six doctors, seven, because one became a doctor. And then if you add just other people, there were a lot more people that also agreed with the study, I mean, you could add in Michael Tracy, but it's just not accurate to claim that it was just him doing, writing these reports. You know, it doesn't, no one wants to acknowledge they were doctors. And so then when you looked online, you wouldn't know. You just thought it was just Michael Tracy who knew nothing about anatomy, according to a couple of people named Curtis Weber and Artis Parshall. They don't mention Dr. Herod or Dr. Van de Graaff or the three other doctors in 2007, you know. They just don't, you just won't find out on the internet. So I don't find out until 2022, well, 2021, but that's four or five years. Man, can't believe it. Me searching through Google just had no idea. You just aren't going to know. I mean, you could. You can find articles about In Search of Joseph through Google, but 
you have to search in search of Joseph, right? I had to read Million Shall No Brother Joseph again to find it. So you probably, I don't know how many pages in Google, but pretty far. So I, I, Michael Tracy was interviewed and he's just wanting to try to do it again and do a 3D thing. So he's not, I think it's just good. He's not um, feeling beaten down or discouraged anymore. So I, I've definitely wanted to just, I keep saying thank you for doing that when I talk, bring this up, even though I don't agree with the scan all digger type at all, but I, I think the scan all digger type matches better than the lock photo. I don't know what you guys think, but like, as I'm artistically analyzing, like, I don't need to change the size of this. When I lined the death mask up to this guy's face, I sketched this and I just dropped it on here. I didn't need to tilt it. So when I was looking at the locket photo, I had to tilt so many things to try to get anything to remotely match of everything. I had to resize everything. It, nothing, everything was a mess. I'm like, how did they? I, I didn't need to change this and look at that. You see, that's right where the shadow's changing. So that's like the deepest part right there. So you can see. There's a deep wrinkle there. I think the eyes bulge when they die. Pass away, that's something I did read. It's like skin tightening, those are things to be aware of. Okay, left eye, blah, blah. So what I changed, because I had it this way before we had a video. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have so much on there. And I'm like, why, why not? So I threw the video back on there that I did in, um, I think this was 2020. And I tried to do several different colors, of course. Sometimes I'm stupid and just choose the worst colors, but oh well. These are hot pink though. <laughs> but you can see that bushy eyebrow just really falling into place. But there are some things like, is, are those really eyebrow hairs going up there? Or is that just the shape of his brow bone? Because it matches the shape of his brow bone. Whether there are crazy eyebrow hairs going all the way up to there, who knows. But it, it could be more vellus hair. Like Vellus hair is less coarse, and so I don't, I, is is that eyebrow hairs? Is that a shadow? It sometimes it's difficult to tell from the photo, and of course you can watch this video where I'm probably like, wow, wow, like the eyebrows are just just looking at them are amazing so it was a year and a half in that I decided to in, do individual features and drag and drop again I didn't like it's an artistic analysis I didn't learn it anywhere but I do tell people to do that I'm like you go ahead and do what I do it's just amazing how much it matches the nose it's incredible the mouth is great I mean that's one thing you, you it's hard to pick out some details, but there's still enough there. Especially when you have the contrast, you can really tell he definitely does have his lip drops down a little bit right in the middle there. And I think light is just hitting right there. I don't think this I don't think the left side of his upper lip is dramatically thinner than the right. I don't know. And you can look at the chin chin has some nuances that are pretty incredible so again I'm not a forensic scientist this is not at all how they they do this because I asked him like did I just not know you guys actually did like, no um but any reasons why what they actually do it's like I leave that up to them because they are literally literally scientists <laughs> I'm not um but have I I'm in the medical field yeah this painting, whew. when you zoom in, there's just certain details that are not in the original oil painting. So I really do not agree with certain people saying that Joseph Smith III never saw the daguerreotype. That was an interesting theory from the summer from Romig and Mackay. Don't say Mackie, it's Mackay. They really think that Joseph Smith III didn't go in his mother's bedroom much. But Junius F. Wells, who like went there once, 
looked at Carter's image and believed it was just of the painting, but it's not Joseph Smith III that's uh, been selling photos of the painting anyway for six years. Doesn't understand, even though his end product <laughs> submitted to the Library of Congress in 1879 <laughs> looks exactly like Carter's, just slightly different. The eyes are just slightly closer. It's the only difference between when I analyzed the Library of Congress photo. So go to my timeline. Excuse me. Okay, you look at this. I analyzed this. The eyes are a little bit closer together. That's the, basically the only main difference between that and where Carter ended up with. It was almost the exact same technique. They took a photo of the painting, used India ink, and you know, tried to make it look true, like real to life. Like why would they say true to life if it was a photo of a man alive like it wasn't? They said it's a portrait. You can just read through the timeline and read through these sources and get, you know, my explanation. But this was the first mention, so he was there. I'm just shaking my head because the spirit told me not to write something in particular when I first published the website and I shouldn't have but it's just um these videos are not that interesting but a lot of times I'm just like whoa you know I I definitely this is I think it's an important thing other people may not think it's important Yeah, I, yeah, so basically it was Salt Lake City. They, they don't, when I read this over and over, I'm like, I, I think they, they are well aware this is not a photo of a man, but people are confused because Carter's selling it and it just looks amazing. Back then, they, they just think it's a photo of a man and Jimmy stuff. Well, it's like, no, it's a photo of the painting. Why he, he only went there, if you go to the top, this is where he explains it was, 76. He went there once, but Joseph Smith III is staring at it. He's already been taking photos since 1879. So six years later, he's been taking photos. His end product looks almost exactly like Carter's end product, but somehow they, and he's explaining, it's just a photo of the painting in 1879. Like he says, this is his paper. He doesn't claim it's a photo of a man, and it's 1879. Okay, why would he suddenly look at Carter's end product and, or his photo of the painting? Just like, this is a photo of a man, you know, but it looks exactly like what I've been selling for six years. Makes no sense. Because he knew. If Junius F. Wells knew Emma didn't like the painting and thought it didn't look like his dad, Joseph Smith III also knew. The painting was in that great of a likeness. So. Anyway, yeah, I'll just stop there. Have a good day.